Hey guys, my name is Adam Lamb, and today I want to share a story with you, and, and it's more of my testimony of how I came to know the Lord. And for folks who have known me most of my life, a lot of them have reached out and they're like, what happened? What caused this change? What, why is this guy all about Jesus now? Right? And so I want to answer that in this video. And for the folks who have known me for a short amount of time, uh, I haven't realized it. They didn't know that I, I wasn't always a Christian. I wasn't always following Jesus Christ. In fact, I was the total opposite way for most of my life. And so I want to share that with you. I want to share the story of that transformation, how it came to be. I want to share the story about the moments of when things all kind of came together <clears throat> and tell a little bit about the outcome of this just change in my life. And um, it's kind of a fun, juicy story. And so I, I hope you'll pay attention, follow through, and, and, and hopefully you can find something great with it. So most of my life, um, I grew up somewhat of a troubled youth. Um, just, you know, I had the challenges that a lot of people have challenges in their life. <clears throat> and really, you know, in trying to identify how I lived, I lived selfishly. I was really all about me. All I cared about was me, what I wanted, um, you know, which was fueled by insecurities, self-doubt, self-worth, which I think plagues a lot of us today. And so, you know, my, I'm always looking for gratification through different things, whether it was, you know, girls or money or what, whatever, something to, <clears throat> to get my fix, something to get my fill, something to make me feel even for a moment that I was worth great or things or whatever. And, and the reality is, is we spend a lot of our time kind of chasing something that doesn't exist in that lifestyle. And that was most of my life. Just always like, what's the next car, the next house, the next thing? Because ultimately there's a void that I had inside um, that just couldn't get filled. And, and I think, and I hope a lot of you listening today will think, you know what? I have a void too. I'm searching. I'm trying to fill that void. And maybe this, this story can help you. So I moved down to Texas um, just over two years ago with my family. And it was a great move. It was like just absolutely so fortunate to have this whole process happen. But for me, I was in a situation of it was challenging because it was a new place. I don't have any friends. I don't have any family. I was transitioning some stuff with uh, my business. And so I had a lot of uncertainty, a lot of doubt, a lot of self-doubt, which brought back you know, insecurities. How am I gonna do? Am I gonna do well in this new place? Maybe I'm not gonna do well in this new place. And, and during that time, I, I just found myself in a place of just really like soul searching, right? And so I share that with you because I want you to maybe think maybe you're going through a time or you went through a time, or if you do go through a time where you're just searching like, what's going on? Am I, am I in the right marriage? Am I in the right place? Maybe I should move back to Michigan where I'm from originally. All these questions and, and things are going on. And I share that because I want you to understand the state of where I was at, right? And, and so during this time, you know, I'm, we're plugging away. I'm joining the local gym and, you know, trying to make some friends here and there and doing some things with business and, you know, adjusting, trying to find the, the funness and the newness out of moving to a new place. And through the course of time, though, um, there was a concert I took my son to and I was at this concert and I shared this story with you because for my Christian friends, you never know when God is going to put you somewhere to be the voice. And for my non-Christian friends, you never know where you're going to be when God's going to come tap it on your door and you don't, and you may not know it, but if you're in a position, like I think a lot of us are sometimes the searching and looking and listening and like looking for some hope and some answers, you may hear it better. And so I go to this concert I've taken my son to, is Imagine Dragons. We're excited, we're fired up, dad and son thing, we go there. We're sitting in this auditorium full of 17,000 people. And there's a woman sitting next to me who I'd recognized because she goes to this gym that I go to near my house. And she had her daughter with her, uh, who's the same age as my son. And so we kind of was like, hey, you, you know, you go to the gym. We, I, I, she didn't know who I was, but I, I recognized her. We talked for a little bit. And, you know, through the concert, we're dancing, we're having fun. It was, it was a great place to just, you know, at a concert, we just let go and you're not worried about all your properness and carrying yourself in a certain way. Um, and it, we, the four of us kind of just had a good time, right? And so 
over the course of time, I would, I'd see this woman at the gym regularly and we would talk and we would share. And it was someone, it was, the, the relationship was good because it was, she didn't know my family. She didn't really know my work. It wasn't someone I worked with. She was just unrelated. And so it was a safe place for just kind of talk and share. And sometimes we have these relationships in our life or you might be that individual in someone else's life where you're just a friend, no agenda, no reason. Um, and for my, my Christian friends that are watching this, those are opportunities for you if you're paying attention and you're looking to, to potentially help somebody, even though you might not know they're in need, right? And I was at the time. And so we would talk and, and I actually, uh, I wrote a book, it's called Better Than the Binge, Overcoming the Social Obligation of Alcohol. I quit drinking over three years ago. I decided to write a book about it because uh, I want to help others potentially identify uh, something, a bad relationship with alcohol. And I was telling her about this book and she said, oh, well, did, did you find God? Is that why, you know, did, were you saved? Because a lot of people go through that 13 step program and um, or 12 step program and they and they kind of find find god with that and i was like no i don't even believe in that stuff i'm not a christian i don't subscribe to that you know i i believe in the universe and things happen with the universe and things like that and at the time i didn't pay attention to it but i look back and i think she was kind of like hmm okay but i gave her my book she read it i didn't see her for a while uh, time goes on this is a uh, time of the year we're about November okay so going into the holiday season with Christmas and things like that and so I gave this woman my book hadn't seen her since kind of vanished disappeared and so and I actually for a time was like I wonder if she moved or left or whatever um, and, and that will all be relevant in a little bit so time goes on we're approaching Christmas season and I realized so we're down here in Texas it's it's a lot more religious a lot more Christian uh, everybody goes to church down here, which was not something that wa was very much in our in our uh, community where we lived in Michigan. And so, these the, uh, going through this holiday season, I really found my daughter had no clue why we celebrated Christmas, and my son was like, "Yeah, there's like a baby born, or something, some baby's birthday, or something like that." And I said to my wife, "I was like, listen, for the sake of not embarrassing our kids." we should go to church or like educate them. I'm not qualified. I mean, I barely, I barely know the story. Right. So, so we talked about it and said, yeah, you know, she's like, Hey, it's a good idea. I think, you know, it doesn't hurt. It's a positive thing, whatever. Um, but still I was like, I don't know. I don't want to not subscribe to that Christian stuff, that whole life that, you know, those guys, because I just had a, a negative thought process as, as far as like how Christians are and who they were and how they behaved. And the reality was I didn't know. I just, I didn't, I, maybe you have some bad Christians that are bad examples. And then, then you think that's how they all are. So we kept thinking about this. So it was on my heart. My heart was open to church and understanding Jesus and Christmas and God and those kind of things. And so at the same time of year, it's a couple weeks into the new year and I had not gone to church yet, but I, we looked into it. I started watching Joel Osteen on, on uh, TV and, and I've always liked him. I've liked the, the positive message that he has. And I used to always say, hey, I was like, hey, you can throw that Christian, Christian crap out and listen to the positive message. That guy's not bad, right? But uh, the reality was is the, the deepest part of the message was the most important part, uh, but I didn't learn that until later. So we're into the new year. Uh, I, I feel like I'm not doing my job as a parent because my kids have no clue why we celebrate holiday and these, certain these kind of things. And so I felt this pressure of, of the, you know, go through the holiday season, which is always challenging, you know, kind of challenging with families and stuff like that. And I, I just, I, I wasn't in the best place. Um, I wasn't in the best place at all uh, anywhere else, um, kind of in my life, just a lot questioning everything questioning my relationship, questioning how what good I'm doing as a father, questioning uh, business and am I making the right decisions and these kind of things. And so right around this time, it's about mid-January, I see that friend of mine from the gym. I'm at the gym, I'm leaving the gym, and I see her walking in. And I, and I haven't seen her in a long time. And she has this book in her hand. And it's, uh, I didn't know what the book was at first when she had it. And so she comes up to me and she says, 
I knew I was going to see you today. I said, you were, you do. And I was like, I haven't seen you in almost two months. And she said, yeah. She goes, I've been, I've been praying about your family. She goes, I want you to know I read your book. And it made me realize some things in myself that were wrong. And it realized I had pushed myself away from God and my family. And so I just started going back to church, started reading my Bible. And I've been praying about you and your family. She's like, uh, I brought you this book. And I was like, okay. And the book's called Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. And I want to first off say, especially for my Christian friends out there, it takes guts sometimes to hand somebody a book like this. And I thank God every day that that, that woman hand, had the guts to, to, to in boldness to, to give me this book. Because a lot of people might, hey, don't throw, me, don't throw that stuff in my face. I don't want to subscribe to your religion. I have my own beliefs, those kind of things. But I believe it's our job as Christians to to really share the good news. And I'm so grateful. And I'm a testimony that, that it works. And so... She gives me this book and I'm like, what is it? <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, it's a Jesus thing. I've been thinking, you know, I want to learn a little bit about this stuff and go to church. <clears throat> Plus it's a positive. So it's a daily affirmation book. That's just, it's positive, right? Like I love that stuff. I've always loved that stuff. I've loved any inspirational, motivational thing since I was a child. So I'm good with it. But I was like, I just don't know this, the Jesus part of this thing. So I'm like, okay, cool. Hey, thank you. I appreciate the gift. Um, and then she went on to tell me, she said, you know, I see you in my church. I see you speaking in my church. I see you changing lives in my church. And I'm like, I don't even know where this lady's church is. I've probably been to, in a church five times in the last 10 years, maybe a couple funerals and like a wedding ceremony I got dragged to. And, um, I, mean, I couldn't think of a place I feel more uncomfortable than church. And so when this woman tell me this, I'm like, she lost her marbles. She must have hit her head, and that's why I didn't see her. She's maybe committed to a loony institute. Either way, she brought me this book. It was nice to see her. And so I left because I had uh, to, some things to get to, so we didn't have too much time to catch up. So that was a Thursday. Uh, and the next day, I, I, I was in my office. It was a Friday morning. And it was uh, kind of a quiet, slow morning. I didn't have too much planned in my schedule for the morning. And so I, I, I saw this book sitting on my desk and I picked it up. It was actually January 19th, which was the Thursday I got the book is when I, I actually read this. And so I'm sitting there in my office, willing to give this book a chance. And it says, seek my face and you will find more than you ever dreamed possible. And as I read those words, magic happened. God, it's almost like, I, I mean, to try to put it into something that we could relate to is it's like rubbing the, the genie's bottle. Like it was just like, like uh, not a ghost appearing, but just it, God just came to me. If you can understand that. And it took me a long time to share this with other people because I didn't want to think first. I thought, was that crazy? Second off, I didn't want other people to think I was crazy. And third, if you told me that, most of the time, I'd think you were crazy. Um, and fortunately, having some pretty close Christian friends that shared me, that that's like that burning bush moment of God just so powerfully coming into your life. And so I read that, seek my face and you will find more than you ever dreamed. And in that moment, like I said, God appeared to me. And I felt immediately, I felt guilty. I felt a little fear, but I was still comfortable because I knew it's like at the same time I was scared, but I knew I was safe. I knew who was there. Um, and it was just the, the most magical, amazing experience of my life. I mean, you take my marriage, the birth of my children, the three people I just care about the most in this earth. And it's a, a million times greater than that because it's just something so surreal that it's hard to describe. And I pray that everyone gets to have an experience like that. And so God came to me and he says, I want to show you something. And he's like, you, you've never believed in me. He's like, but I want to show you when you did. And he took me back through my life and showed me all these things, why I should be dead, divorced, in jail, nowhere near where I'm at today from like where I'm at, just where God has been so grateful to her. I'm so grateful that God has blessed me to be. And I look back and I think, wow, all this stuff he's done for me. And the reality is he's done that for you. And he took me all the way back through time, just seeing this troubling childhood and just very confusing teenage high school years, absolute 
terror in my 20s, like just going all the way back. And he took me back to the seven-year-old me. And I could see me at seven years old, scared, uh, just fearful with the feeling of being forgotten. And it, in that moment, I realized that when I was seven, I thought God forgot about me. I thought he just passed me over, kind of divorced, divorced my parents and losing our house and just the circumstances, being bullied and things like that. Like at that time, I just was like, I guess God forgot about me. I guess he passed me over. And at that time, I spent the rest of my life that way. Hey, it's me against the world. It's me, me versus everything else. And, and it caused me to be kind of toughen up and fight for myself and become selfish because it was just me. I couldn't rely on parents. Dad left, right? Like mom's trying to just keep it together. And, and I couldn't rely on you know friends. Like sometimes, you know, when you're growing up, Sometimes kids are your friends, sometimes they're not your friends. And, and I think a lot of us can relate to that through life. And so it's a reminder to be grateful for those really great people in your life that stand by. But I, I, I spent the rest of my life thinking I've been forgotten. There's no consequences, it doesn't matter, must not be. And, you know, and as you grow into that, all right, it's not real, God's not real and things like that. But before I was seven, I really truly believed in God. Um, and I remember I had a special place in my heart that God was real and God loved me and, and, and things like that. So this was a very emotional time because at that moment, I knew I would accept God in my heart as real and, and I'm going to abide by this God and I want to follow the rules, even though I didn't know any of them other than a lot of stuff like I heard because I've never really researched it. And so this little seven-year-old boy who's sitting there looks up at me and just says, thank you. And, it, and I realized that that inner child of me that had been so sad and so disappointed because he thought God forgot, has realized that God didn't forget and it's never too late to change. Even at, I'll be 40 this year, um, in a couple weeks actually. Um, and I think back to, so like, how long, 33 years ago that that happened and how I just kind of lived my life, right? And so God says, I want to show you something else. He says, Do you believe in me now? I said, yes, you have my heart you have my life. I lived all this part of my life for me selfishly. I want to give the rest to you. I don't know how, I don't know what to do. I'm like, just whatever, man, whatever we got to do. Right. And so he said, I want to show you something else. And so God kind of took me back to the present and, and really showed me the future. Right. And so it was this level of just certainty and love and all the great things that, that I have coming and it's only coming because of the decision I made to choose God. I didn't know anything about Jesus. I didn't know anything about the Bible, never read any of it, you know, it, but I knew in my heart, I had, I had to change. I had to make that decision. Um, and I think God knew in my heart, uh, I made that decision, but I didn't know what that decision meant. And I think a lot of new Christians, they want to make that decision or they've made that decision and they don't know what that decision means. And the great news is, is we serve a merciful God who's full of grace. It's just going to help you learn your, your position which is to him and your purpose, which is to serve him and serve others, right? And so this is an incredible day. This is just Friday morning, right? All this happens is an amazing, amazing emotional day. It was almost like, I think we're around Christmas time right now. I think of that, the ghost of Christmas past and the ghost of Christmas future. It was very much like that situation. And like I said, I, I didn't share this story for almost a year because it was like, how do you tell that? I didn't realize that other people experienced things like this. And so I just kind of was like, what do I do? I didn't tell my wife. I was just like more, we kind of talked about going to church. So maybe I'm just a little more gung ho about it. And so that whole day, I just was like daydream, like out of my mind, just from this incredible experience that just happened. And so Saturday morning, the next day, about 8 a.m., um, one of my, I would say my best 
Christian friend at the time. I didn't have many, one or two, right? I could think of, uh, his name's Jason Olofsson. And we've been friends since high school. Um, and we would talk regularly uh, just about, uh, both. we're both in the health and wellness space and we're always kind of, hey, I got a question, I got a client or I, I need this or a question on a supplement or something like that. We always called each other with a purpose is the point I'm trying to make. And so Jason calls me 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning, which is a little early to call somebody on a Saturday morning. Um, but I figured he probably had an urgent question, something he needed the answer to, something that had been bothering him. And so he calls and we're talking and he's just kind of, you know, shooting the breeze. What's new? What's happening? How's the family? And I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, I don't want to be rude. He's a really nice guy, but I'm like, what are you calling me for? And so he, you know, we're just talking and we kind of get to the end of the conversation. I was like, Hey, my, my wife's calling me for breakfast. Um, but you know what, before we hang up, I want to tell you something. I've really been thinking about wanting to have a closer relationship with God. That's all I knew how to say. And you know what? Of everybody on earth, he's the person I felt most comfortable saying that to who wouldn't have been like, dude, you're crazy. Because he was by far my most Christian friend. Prayed when we had lunch together, talked about his relationship with God, even though I was like, whatever, whatever, you know, <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't subscribe to it. I didn't say that to him, but I didn't understand it. And I said that to him. I said, you know, Jason, I've been thinking I want to have a close relationship to God. And he screams in the phone. He goes, praise the Lord. And he yells to his wife. He says, Juliet, you'll never guess what Adam Lamb just said to me. He wants to have a close relationship with God. I can hear her yelling in the background. I'm like, what is wrong with these people? And, and he said, Adam, he's like, you have no clue how close to God you already are. He said, sometimes, man, I hang up with you and I feel like God spoke through you to me. You give me answers. You help me see direction on things. He's like, dude, you and God are so close. You have no clue. And I said, well, I didn't tell him the story, but I just said, you know, I really want to have a, I just really want to get closer to God. And he said, I want to tell you something. God woke me up this morning. It was on my heart. He's like, I flew out of bed 5 a.m. to call you. I didn't know why, but God told me to call you. And now I know why, because he told me to tell you, don't worry about the rules, worry about the relationship. And I, I didn't know what that meant. Today, it's everything to me, but, and, and I think it's everything for new Christians to really understand focusing on the relationship with God is so much more important than all the rule. You got to put your hands up. You got to do this. You got to go to church you got like, that could be overwhelming. And if you really, really are focusing on just like that relationship with God, loving God, God loving you, what that means, who you are to him and all that stuff, it will help you do anything you want in life. And so going back to this, he said that to me. And at the time, it was, it was everything I needed to hear. That's so when I think of it like when you think of how God works, you think the next morning, the first person outside of my family I speak to, my most Christian friend, right? God brought the most comfortable Christian person into my life at that moment to tell me to not worry about the rules, worry about the relationship. And I just think like, that's when you, when you see these things, when you're open to what God's doing, you see it and it's just, it's such an amazing way to live. And that was just my initial taste. And, and I knew at that time that, that God may have had, may have some, some plans for me. And so, but I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what it meant to abide. Right? I didn't know what it meant to follow his guidance and listen to him and trust him and have faith in, in, in your circumstance, not just you know, in that situation, but just always being faithful. I didn't understand those things. So we kicked around like, oh, there's a church over. I mean, I'm in Texas, there's a church everywhere. But we didn't know what to do, where to go. So I finally I reached out to my friend, her name's Carla. And I was like, hey, well, can we come to your church? She was like, yeah, you're invited. I told you, I, I see you there. I want to do it. And I'm like, and I think there was a part of me that was like, I don't want to go, I told you so. And so I'm like, all right, whatever, we'll go to your church. So we go to our church. It's called North Central Church. And it's the first day I went to the church. We sat down, pastor speaking. And I'm like, this place isn't for me. I was like, I'm uncomfortable. Well, guess what? When God comes into your heart and wants to talk about the things that you might need to be working on, it's going to be uncomfortable, just like anything. You tell me you want to lose 30 pounds, there's going to be an uncomfortable process. We're going to eliminate some things that aren't serving you, and you're going to pick up some new habits that are better for you, right? It's common sense, but 
A lot of times as Christians, we forget that process is kind of the same way too. And, and so I was like, I don't know if I like the pastor. I don't know if it's a lot of this Jesus stuff. I don't really know about this. Um, I didn't realize that that day that was Jesus talking to me. I was just like, something came, something was. It was God is, is what I knew it was. And so it was weird. I'm like, I don't know if I want to go back. And I remember even telling my friend Carlo, I was like, is that pastor always like that? He seemed a little intense, like he was mad or something like that. But it, it, it wasn't. He was just the way he always is. But it was my heart being convicted of just that situation, learning myself, learning how to be, learning where I need to be. So a little bit of time goes on and, and through the course, I start going to church. All right, I'm going to lean into it. And I give everybody some advice here that's watching this is that when you're in moments of discomfort, you're probably in the right place, right? And too often we don't progress in life because we choose our comfort zone over progress, right? And so lean into those uncomfortable situations, try that new thing, right? And I would say that, that, that my friends that are maybe, or people watching this that are kind of on the fence, like lean into following Jesus, learning, going to church, going through the process, meet some great people. And you'll likely find just that void that I was talking about in the beginning gets filled it, and it only can be filled that way. And so as time goes on, fast forward six months, I'm asked to speak at church. I'm asked to join the youth group of the church where I get to every Wednesday, I, I get to go in and just pour into these lives of these young people, these junior high and high school people. And it's in, when you look back at it, you know, there's a, there's a saying, and I really believe in it is be the adult you wish you had in your life. Right. And so, man, when I was junior high and high school, I would love to have someone like me who understood me, listened, and was there for me because I didn't really have that. I didn't have that father figure. Unfortunately, we live in a society where dads aren't always around. You know, mine wasn't. And so I know that there's a feeling of wanting that person in my life, a positive. Otherwise, we find a negative role model sometimes. And so I just feel in it, the fulfillment that I got from that of being able to serve others and work with young people in a position that I wish I would have had someone there was just was more rewarding than building a multi-billion dollar company more rewarding than a big house or all those things. And, and it, you know, it's, it's funny. There's a, a saying too with, with, with Jesus, it'll change what you see and change what you seek. Right. And so the things that are a priority or were a priority to me weren't, there's some things that I don't even, I wouldn't even consider anymore because this new path. Right. But it takes time. It takes patience. It takes a willingness to surrender and, want to learn about yourself and want to learn about Jesus. And, you know, and it's worrying about focusing on that relationship, not the rules. Right. And so fast forward, we're coming up on not even two years of, of this journey of this new life. Right. And it, it really is a new life. When they talk about being a born again, Christian, I was like, what's, what does that mean? Born again. And it is like the, the old you, you have to let the old you die in order to be reborn in this new new path, this new way of life. And, it, and it's a beautiful thing. Over the summer, I got baptized uh, with my my kids and, and, and I both did together, which is cool. And I, I'll tell you to take things slow because I'll tell you at first, when it first really hit me about three or four months in, I was like, I gotta be a pastor. That's that's my calling. and it. I don't think it's my calling. It, it, maybe it is, but it's not in the moment. What, what my calling is, is to really learn about and build that relationship with Jesus so that I can share that with others. So I can share the good news. I can tell that story. I can be someone who's there for somebody else that may be in need. Um, because if, if you don't have anything, if you don't have good content, you have nothing to share, right? And so I want to fill myself with as much content. So it takes time. So we're coming up. Uh, this January will be two years since kind of had that burning bush moment, since I had the opportunity to really get to know who Jesus was. And, and I'm so grateful for it. And the key things I want to share with you to take away from this are, number one, you never know when God's going to come, right? God says yes. God says not now or God says, I have a, another way, right? 
But if you don't believe, you can't, you, you can't hear it, right? So if, and everyone's entitled to their own belief, but it's like a language. If, if you aren't trying to learn the language, even though you might not know it, you definitely will never understand it, right? So I think having an open heart and an open mind will allow God to do, allow you to see the things God, God's doing them either way, whether you believe or not. You can be totally against them, God's still doing stuff in your life. That's the amazing part. The second thing is, for my Christian friends, God wants to and needs to use you to help others, to share the good news. We know about this. It's discipleship. It's our calling is to go out the Great Commission to, to, to share the great news. And be bold. Give, give somebody a book. So like this book changed my life, right? At, at minimum. This woman that had the boldness and the guts to say, hey, I got something for you. I want you to read it. I could have thrown it in the trash. What would she have to lose? Nothing. A book. She got me the book anyway. So, but this book changed my family's life. It's changing the other people's life that I come in contact with. And who knows what God's got in store for other lives that come from just that one person having the boldness. So be bold. Share the good news that you know already with Jesus Christ. And the third thing is that I'd want to share with you is just focus on the relationship. Focus on that loving, embracing father, that friend, that person that loves you, that, that, that just above all, above the greatest thing. Focus on that over the rules and standing up and hands. Maybe I don't want to sing. Maybe you don't want to clap. Don't, don't do any of it. You don't have to. Maybe you don't even want to go to church. I recommend it. But it's hard to really focus on that relationship if you're not in that environment of your other brothers and sisters uh, who are believers as well. And the fourth thing, be patient. God works on God's time, not your time, not your agenda. He doesn't do things when you want, when you think it should happen. When you, it's, it's sometimes hard, especially for me, to, to imagine that there's just such a greater understanding, a greater power something that doesn't understand the word impossible. It doesn't exist. And when I think in my life, like if you look back at me at, you know, elementary, for example, and were to tell me I would be where I'm at today, no one would believe it. No one would believe it. I wouldn't believe it. And, and, the, and the reason I say that is because God is so good and God does great things. You can fight them and make it hard and maybe miss out on some of those things, or you can embrace it and, and just have so much faith and trust in the, the great things that God can do. And he can take you to amazing places. And I pray that everyone watching this can just find God's love in their heart, grow God's love in their heart. And I hope that you can find others that you can share this with that can also learn to know our Savior, Jesus Christ, and just the amazing things that can be done in their heart. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's just a, a blessing that God's come in my life and I, I have this relationship now that I can talk about and share. And, and I thank you for listening and watching. And I hope uh, that many blessings come into your life for doing so. Thank you so much.